This is the first MISC ship in about five years. In my mind, it'll be pushing into the further expanses of the universe, going as far as you can go and seeing what's out there. The type of player this ship should appeal to is those players who just like traditionally non-combat experiences. The Odyssey is sort of designed for a more generic role in terms of they want to go off into the wild blue yonder and just explore. Being MISC, uh, obviously they work closely with Gian and incorporate tech, so that primarily on the art side gave a lot of flexibility, but on the design side allowed us to justify some of the more interesting features of the ship. In terms of the ship from front to back, there's a lot more of that cool levitation tech. You've got that classic sort of wide cockpit we see on MISC ships like the Freelancer. Underneath, you know, we've got like a prospector type bubble. We took house two crew. One person does the tractor beaming, one person does the mining. We've got two unmanned turrets for a little bit of self-defense. There's one at the back under the underneath too. And then the pilot has a variety of missiles to use. On the interior, we've split it over three levels in total. Top deck is mainly some engineering space and refinery. So you can mine Quantanium and refine it for the ship itself. So that essentially gives you the ability to just generate your own quantum and hydrogen fuel. Obviously, Star Citizen is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We know we're introducing more systems. Fuel is going to become a major issue, right? And so this is perfect for that kind of scenario. The middle deck is the sort of the, probably the most dominant of the three. You have a a bridge at the front of the ship and it's quite a nice bridge on the Odyssey because you have this huge bank of stations for all the crew to sit there all in one place. Every crew member has their own room with ensuite facilities on board. And then the, the lower deck leads us to the hangar, which is basically what the whole ship is formed around, essentially. So that really did dictate the dimensions and the proportions of the ship. It's a generic hangar. It's designed to our environmental hangar metrics. So there's a huge range of ships that can fit in there. You could bring a fighter ship if you want more defense. You could bring a prospector if you want to do even more mining. The, the hangar on there is a, a huge volume and helps support any choice you want to make with ships. There's a little medical bay in there for any accidents that happen along the way. We have this one room which is kind of really in there just as like the rule of cool. You can just sort of sit there and just see space, you know, as you're zooming along. The natural competitor to the Odyssey is the carrot. In my mind, it's a carrot killer. What you can do with it is pretty impressive. It's kind of the multi-tool of the spaceship world. It just gives you almost ultimate flexibility on how you want to play. The Misk Odyssey is the ultimate exploration ship. The Misk Odyssey is the first offering from the storied manufacturer in quite some time, and they seem intent on bursting back into the scene with a massive impact that is sure to make Carrick owners look twice. And while that wraps up our multi-week coverage of the new ships and vehicles of this year's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, let's go ahead and take a look into the future with a special vehicle-themed sprint report. To get things started, members of the EU Vehicle Content Team 
have returned their attentions to the hull A and hull C as they continue refining the work previously done in order to bring it up to current standards and, perhaps most importantly, metrics. Now, if you've been following the project for some time, you'll know we learn with each and every ship we make, and it's essential to take those lessons forward so they can inform each and every ship yet to come. Now, while the whole A continues its journey through Final Art Exterior and Gray Box Interior, what you can see here with the Hull C are the results of not just some recent lighting passes, but an effort to update the interior scales of certain areas for improved player and NPC comfort alike, addressing those metric issues and experimenting with some early attempts at new building block screens for tractor beams and the like. And speaking of tractor beams, the vehicle content team has begun building the size 1, 2, and 3 tractor beams that can be equipped to a variety of vehicles, bringing with it some long-awaited functionality to ships like the 300 seen here, the Caterpillar, and more. Minor updates are also underway to the Starfarer, as it gets ready to make its debut not just as the first refueling ship in Star Citizen, but the first refining vehicle as well as new additions to the exterior walkway will allow it to take canisters of newly mined fuel from other spaceships for processing. And yes, we want to update the interior just as much as you do. We're looking at where we can slip that into the schedule now, so uh, hang tight. Up next, let's move along to the Vulture, the entry-level salvage ship from Drake, which has moved into final art phase with a look at the habitation area, as well as the cockpit. And for ships just beginning their journey, we can announce that the Scorpius fighter from RSI has begun its journey through white box phase, where the team works to ensure all current metrics are met and that all the component spaces work as we'd like them to. It's so far, so good, with no surprises, which itself is kind of always a surprise. And finally, before we let you go, we showcase the updated concepts for the Banu Merchantmen at this year's CitizenCon. And now I'm pleased to report that in our final IAE 2951 vehicle episode, that the Merchunk Man itself has begun its journey and moved from concept phase into white box with this highly anticipated first image. Hey, everything starts somewhere. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. And you're gonna get to follow along with it from the very beginning of its journey from this point forward. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Misk wasn't content to just let Anvil sit alone at the top of the Exploration Pyramid with the recently revealed Odyssey. That there are a variety of new ships and ship updates that will make their way to the Persistent Universe between this year's IAE and the next. And that sometimes I'm just going to hide stuff in the outro to reward folks who watch until the very end. Something like a, a bunch more Banu Merchantman updates, maybe? Looking good. Nice. That's a turret, not an ED-209. Ooh, and some video. Yes, sometimes I'm a jerk, but I'm your jerk. Now, don't forget that our big IAE All Ships Q&A airs tomorrow on Star Citizen Live on Twitch, and it's your chance to ask about the Spartan, the Raft, the Odyssey, and all the latest vehicles from this year's IAE. And then we'll be right back here next week with a look at the exciting future of Gravlev and revamped Jumptown 2, both coming in Alpha 316. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. And now, for people who stick around until the very end, uh, I got this. It's not coming soon, though. Sometimes we like to have fun.